How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you what I do in almost every single one of my node strings. I'm going to give you sort of the basics of um, what, I, what I like to do. And the goal is that you can take these ideas and really expand them. I get so many requests about shading and shading is a wildly complex thing that something that would require like a three hour full course. But what I'm going to give you guys is the bones of what I do every day that you can build off of and you can really try to learn and do some self exploration with this. Uh, but before I get into that, let me shout out today's sponsor. The sponsor for today's video is Zyro. Zyro is a website builder that makes it extremely easy for anyone to create amazing websites and launch online stores that sell. It really is the easiest way to create a website or an online store. You don't have to learn to code to use Zyro. It's extremely fast to build and quick to load. Zyro is also the most affordable option on the market. You never have to overpay for features you don't even use. You can easily manage all of your businesses in one single place, including selling on Facebook, Instagram, and Amazon, and as us 3D creatives, we do like to sell a lot of assets, and this is really good. In the description, there is a coupon code that you can use to get 30% off of your plan, so you can head over to Zyro and get your website going. All right, so I'm going to be using this fun little abstract scene. Um, I actually made a tutorial for how to make this on Patreon. You can go and get that in the description if you'd like. But yeah, we have this simple scene here and we're just gonna start shading it. So all of these things have the same material. I actually wanna remove the material from the background and let's just give it a really dark color just to really separate the two. And now this is, of course, the most basic way to shade. I'm gonna assume most of you know what you're looking at with this. If this is your first ever video um, you know, about shading, I would say watch a, uh, a pure, intro course to explain to you what these do, but I'm assuming a little bit of basic knowledge about this principled node, but still this is going to be a beginner video. So what I like to do is use these wonderful little tabs over here and I'm going to be using the shading tab right up here. So here it is. Of course, in terms of the models you want to use, you can use any model for this. We're going to be doing everything fully procedurally. So everything we're doing wraps around any model. So let's go and do my favorite string of nodes. I pretty much put a color ramp before anything. Now you can use math nodes, but that's extremely complicated and no one really knows too much about those. And I wanna keep it as visual, visual as I can. And the color ramp is super visual. Now if you've never used a color ramp, you'll go to Shift A, hit search and type in color. And I'll have the color ramp right here. Now here's the color. I'm gonna pop it right here into the base color. And um, I seem to have clicked on the wrong one. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to click the color ramp, hit Control C or Command C if you're on Mac. I'm going to Control V and then pop that into the base color here. So you can see it affected this, kind of made it darker, and that's because there is black here. But that's kind of boring. Let's do, in my opinion, the most useful node here, and that's going to be the uh, noise. Now what I'm about to do is show you a string of nodes that makes everything really fun to work with. We have the noise texture right here. Plug the factor into the color ramp. Now the factor and color are fairly simple to uh, understand. Factor is pure black and white. Color gives you color. So if you plug that into the color, if I plug this straight into the base color, you'll see the noise texture has some color to it. If we just use factor, you'll just get black and white. So that's useful in some cases. Now I'm gonna use the color ramp here because this gives me some flexibility. So if I pull that in, it makes things stronger, almost adds contrast and makes it really, really strong. And then I can go ahead and uh, make it lighter too. So this is how I can use this, which I'll show you with roughness, how really nice this ability to do that is. And you can change color as well. So I'm just gonna keep this at white, bring it all the way to black. Now one super important add-on you should always have on. So I'm gonna go to edit, preferences, head on to the add-ons and type in node wrangler. So have this on. And why that's important is because you're gonna do this every single time, control T puts a mapping and a texture coordinate node. And this object coordinate is the most important thing. You can see how the noise texture is wrapped around it. It's just trying to figure out how to map it. And it's using pretty much like generated coordinates, which is this one right here. What we wanna do is use the object coordinate. And what that's gonna do is see the data in the object and treat it like an even. So now this is actually how the noise texture is supposed to look, not that weird circular pattern. So now we can do things like this, 
bring up the detail, you can bring up the roughness like this. So this is rust, obviously, which is super fun. Again, the noise texture to me is the most useful node. I, uh, it's super flexible. You can use it to control a lot of cool things. I'm going to bring the roughness back, and I'm going to show you one more really interesting thing before we get into other things. Now this, we're going into a little bit more of a complicated um, string of things, but this is what I do all the time when I'm really trying to do crazy stuff. Shift A, go to search, and I'm going to get in a Voronoi. This is my favorite node. It's not the most useful node, as this would be like my second favorite. This one visually is my favorite because I like sci-fi and organic things and very um, straight edge cut things. So the Voronoi node is great for that. Now you pop it right here to the texture coordinate and you could see how it sort of took over everything. I don't want it to do that. The goal of placing my node in between these two things right here, which is called the vector line, is to distort this guy. But, okay, it's, you know, it's, it's destroying it basically, and now it's only a Voronoi node going into a noise texture. How do we tell it? Only, I only want to affect it a little bit. We're gonna get another node called a mix RGB. Now this mix RGB is how you can get two different nodes to speak to each other. So sometimes you'd have like a noise texture plugged into here and a, and a, a musgrave texture plugged into here and you can play with the factor. I know that doesn't really describe it, but um, hopefully that helps you a little bit and I'll show you how this works. So I'll plug the mix texture, I mean the, the mix node here, mix RGB, and then again, still nothing happening. It's just sort of dancing around up to, to gray. The reason why I bring my factor over here and it becomes gray, and that's because there's nothing in the socket, so it's going to be gray. So you can mix these two a little bit. Um, so you can actually kind of make this Vorno node come a little bit like that. But that's not the goal of what this next string of nodes I'm adding does. What we can do is bring this object coordinate into the color too. And I'll bring this up so you can kind of see what's going on. Now these two guys are mixing. What's happening here is if I bring the factor all the way to here, it's almost as if your own the, the object coordinate is strung right straight. Blah, 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 I can't speak today. It's almost as though this object coordinate is strung straight into the mapping, and these don't even exist. But if I bring it over here, it's as if we had just put that Voronoi texture right here on the object coordinate line. So what's great about that is you can bring your factor in and do really interesting node combinations that wouldn't um, otherwise exist doing that. And so say I can change this um, here on the distance, we can change it to distance. And what that does is if we're just using color, it's gonna be flat. You can see how these are just flat Voronoi shapes here. So I'll bring the factor over here. If you use distance, what dis distance does is shows some type of gradient situation. So you can see how, I mean, it's a little bit weirder if I just bring the uh, distance straight into the color ramp here. Now we're only looking at it. You can see how it's kind of um, has some depth to it. That's what distance is. So let me put this uh, noise texture back here on the color ramp. So now we can use distance and go to say like Manhattan. These are different patterns that we like to use. Um, so I'm going to bring that factor in. And now we have a very unique noise texture basically. So what this whole string of nodes, the reason why I did it, is now you can kind of use this as a template and you can dr drop in different textures. So say, I don't want the, I don't want to use the noise texture. I want to use uh, magic. So I'll get the magic texture, plug the vector into the vector and the color into the color. And now we have this different kind of look and then I can play with uh, my distortion here and then I can bring the scale down and really do some crazy stuff. And now we have a really weird and wild texture going on and you can play with um, how everything looks. Like this is just the magic texture by itself. It's a really, really cool node. And then we can bring that factor in and kind of distort it a little bit. Now we have this really crazy cool texture. All right, so let's get into other things that I do every time I'm playing with nodes. One thing I like to do really love metallic so i'm going to make this a metallic texture we need to pump pop in the bump node so i'll put the bump node right here and we'll put the uh, magic texture straight into the height you have to use height don't use anything else because it won't work um, and then you could play with the strength to do something like that and then uh say i'm going to make it a little more subtle something like this just kind of a subtle look and then Let's play with um, texture now. 
sorry, roughness. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, going to hit Shift A and get another color ramp. So color ramp, and we're going to plug the noise texture into here. And we're going to plug the color into the roughness. You can have tons of fun with roughness here in Blender. So if I bring this all the way in, it's like a mirror. You can see how it's perfectly reflective. And then right here you can see it's um, not reflecting anything. That would be this white portion right here. So I can bring this back and we have some reflecting, some not. So say if I want to make this a little more clear because the black is really strong, I can just bring this up like this. And you can see a little bit more clearly now how they're interacting. And that would that's because all of these things coming through input a black and white image. And that's what this color ramp makes sure that it's black and white. So anything that's mapped onto here, that's the white portion of the color ramp, is going to be non-reflective, it's going to be rough. And then anything black is going to be perfectly reflective. And so it's like, hey, I don't like how it's perfectly reflective, it doesn't work for my design, doesn't work for my idea. So I can take the black portion and bring it up some, and now it's still more reflective than this, but it's not that perfect mirror. And that's really great and it's super useful for metallic textures and things like that when you wanna play with roughness and you wanna make it look really cool and really nice. <coughs> for example, I'll get the Musgrave node. So Musgrave texture, I'll plug in the mapping node here to the vector just to keep it even and we'll plug in the Musgrave texture to the color ramp. So sometimes I'll do this, let me pop this down to black. Sometimes I'll do this is um, have this have one texture going and then use a different texture for the roughness so they can interact with each other. So what I'm gonna do is make a really quick roughness, I mean a really quick kind of rust. I use this in so many tutorials. If you follow my tutorials, you've probably seen me do this a thousand times. Dimension down to zero, detail all the way up to 16. And now we have this really kind of specky, speckled looking thing. And then again, like I said, playing with that roughness gives you a really nice metallic texture. So I'll hit the black portion, bring it up like this, and say, bring this down just a little bit because I don't want it to be all that. Now we have a really nice metallic texture. So I'll bring this down um, a little bit more. And now we have this really cool metallic texture, kind of rusty. Sometimes we'll bring the scale like 0 0.5 and play with that. And now we have a very unique, really cool looking texture that you can use for all kinds of things. I'll bring up the depth here on, on, the, um, on the magic here. Let me bring it to like five. And we have something really cool to play with. Maybe bring that strength up on the bump or not. Uh, but again, now we have something super unique you can add to your uh, scenes and whatever you want. And everything you saw me do, the reason I did the things was for a specific reason, and that is, again, you can almost use this like a template. You can apply this basic structure to each material, I mean, each uh, model, and you can just switch out things and play with it and get a billion different variations. So there you go, that's my sort of mid-tier introduction. I know a lot of you have been asking me for to make a specific video on shading and um, actually enjoyed making this. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned something.